When I was 18 years old, I made the best mistake of my life. I had just been struck by climate change depression, thanks to Al Gore, and instead of doing what most people do in this situation, like change certain parts of my lifestyle, support environmental organizations, or attend demonstrations, my reaction was quite different. I quit school and founded a music festival. Big mistake in the eyes of the adult world. Because you know how you're supposed to do things in the correct order? Before choosing a profession, you need to get education. Before starting a business, you need to write a business plan. Before organizing a big festival, you need to get money. I did the opposite of all of these things. I risked my economy, my grades, my reputation and my future. Now, why did I do that? What was the reason for breaking the comfortable and ordinary path and step on the slippery road of entrepreneurship? Well, the answer is, except from climate change depression, I had also, for the first time in my life, experienced something else. Empowerment. Empowerment is when people and groups start to master their own lives and surrounding world. And it starts with a psychological process of insight and motivation. And you know, empowerment is like magic. Empowerment can make people take miles long steps outside their comfort zone. Empowerment can turn frustration into innovation. Empowerment can be the force of everything from grassroots movements and business ideas to government laws and global impact. Empowerment is the key to individual development and sustainable development. In other words, empowerment is one key to a better world for people and the planet. So the question is, how do we systemize empowerment? How can we create the best opportunities for empowerment to thrive in our society? I am now going to give you a lesson in how we, as individuals, entrepreneurs, leaders, parents and so on, can empower our surrounding world and how our system needs to change. But first, let us ask ourselves this question. Why is empowerment such a rare currency in our society? I have identified four obstacles to empowerment that I'm now going to share with you. The first two is about how our system works, while number three and four is more about social psychology and attitudes. And keep in mind that I'm telling you this from the perspective of being a young street smart entrepreneur. Problem number one, school. When I was young, I had a very vivid imagination, producing plenty of new ideas inside and outside my head all the time. And every time I stepped inside a classroom, I felt like I was pushed inside this small, non-creative box where I had to repress all the qualities that defined me and made life good. And as many other students who aren't suited in this little box, I thought that there was something wrong with me. For 12 years, I actually thought there was something wrong with me. But, you know, there has been many reports throughout the years proving that the traditional school system is unjust. It's not suited to a diversity of students. And this, of course, leads to many disastrous effects in our society. For example, uh, children dropping out of school. There are also research showing that 80% of all dropouts and students who doesn't fit the school system are right-brained which means they learn best from artistic and creative methods. However, our school system is, surprise, mostly adapted to left-brained, which is the more rational and, um, uh, yeah, the more rational side. You know, the Swedish um, television documentary, We Can't Do It, shows how girls are burnt out from school stress before they have even turned 18 years old. Students today are told that the character on a piece of paper is what defines their ambition and possibilities in life. That's simply not a school system built to empower our young. Problem number two describes what happens when empowerment is about to turn into action. Now, when we step outside the classroom, we realize that we live in a bigger and more strictly framed box called bureaucracy. Now, whether you want to carry out an idea, address a social challenge or start an organization, you need a certain amount of financial support and you need to do things in a certain order and you need to follow certain rules. When I realized creating a festival 
that will make me need a lot of money. I simply contacted the different support systems, you know, those that actually exist to capture empowerment and accelerate social development. What I got back was this. Endless bunches of complicated forms to fill out. I realized that our support system is not adapted to entrepreneurs and doers. It's adapted to bureaucrats. Now, <laughs> you agree, I see, yeah. Um, and now we all understand why you need rules and administration, especially when it comes to funding. But the way it's structured and presented today is choking empowerment, especially among young creative entrepreneurs who are yet to build a network around them and figure out how the system works. In our system, you are expected to be both this person and this person at the same time. That's not a support system built to embrace empowerment. Another thing I've experienced as a young entrepreneur are comments like this. Honey, do you really think you know what you're doing? You are way too young to organize a music festival. This attitude is what we in Sweden call jantelagen, the law of jante. Now, this unwritten law is inspired by a fictional, intolerant small town in the book A Fugitive Crosses His Tracks by Norwegian author Axel Sandemos. And it basically means know your place and don't believe too much in yourself. And it seems like Jante exists everywhere, from the inside of the classroom to the inside of institutions. Now, I grew up on a small island, and uh, in my experience, the smaller the town is, the more Jante infiltrates the attitudes, which is a pity because in small towns in particular, we need brave, empowered people who think outside the box. So, the law of Jante is the third obstacle to empowerment. Today, it's quite easy to get scared of the world. We have climate change, refugee crisis, terrorism, polluted oceans, Me Too, Donald Trump. It's very easy to get scared of the world. Now, when I present the world like this, does it make you feel empowered? Probably not. Presenting the world like this, like Armageddon is closed, will hardly empower you. It will probably just result in a feeling of depression, fear and guilt. And that's problem number four. The general rhetoric about social and environmental challenges among our media, political leaders, scientists and so on has been built on guilt and fear. Now, guilt and fear will not empower people. Guilt and fear will make people passive, make them stick their head in the sand, make them refuse to acknowledge or, or confront the problem. Guilt and fear creates the the opposite of empowerment, which is the learning of helplessness. If you are told that the world is collapsing and that your actions don't matter, how on earth can you be empowered? Now, I just shared four concrete obstacles to empowerment that I, as a young entrepreneur, have identified. Traditional school system, bureaucratic obstacles, the law of Jante, and guilt and fear mongering. These are things we need to eliminate or change. So the interesting question, of course, is what do we need to do to get away from this? Well, first of all, it doesn't matter how much education and tools you have if you don't believe in yourself. This is where empowerment is crucial. Schools should have a greater purpose than just preparing us with facts and knowledge. Winning the genetic lottery of suiting a traditional school system shouldn't be what defines your future, because our society requires so much more. Both my personal experience of working with dropouts and history itself shows that you find great leaders, artists and entrepreneurs among people who didn't finish school. And as I said before, 80% of all dropouts are right-brained in a left-brain-based system. Imagine the effects on society if school was adapted to diversity of children. If the school system could both foster and capture empowerment among our younger citizens and make them understand that they can make a difference. We simply need a diversity and empowerment-based school system that is connected to reality. 
Also, we cannot allow a traditional bureaucratic support system to restrain empowerment among potential change makers. Expecting people to be both skillful bureaucrats and skillful doers, that is expecting superhumans. We need a more flexible support system that can allow us to grow within our strengths and that is adapted to diversity of empowered change makers. Our governmental institutions simply need to evaluate themselves, study the needs of entrepreneurs and informal leaders and redesign the system. That's a matter of democracy. Empowerment will thrive in a society where we support and encourage each other. A society where we invite big dreams and uniqueness. A society where we allow people to go against the flow and make mistakes without being judged. It's everyone's responsibility to not let the law of Yanta to poison our attitudes and structures. One of the world's most brilliant social entrepreneurs and musicians, Bono, from the band U2, once said that music can change the world because it can change people. And that is very true. If you want to change the world, you need to change people. You need to change people's attitudes, behaviors, and level of empowerment. Now, this quote is actually one of the reasons that I decided to organize a music festival in the first place, whether I could have chosen to do anything. And this was not the totally wrong idea, actually, because last year, the University of Gothenburg published a report called Social Marketing Through Events, which proves that when people go to music festival, a place built on joy, lust and party mood, their mindset allows them to open up for new impressions and change traditional behaviors and norms. That's very interesting. And what am I saying with this, that music festivals will solve our global challenges? Well, I do wish the answer was that easy, but of course it's not. However, this research shows why we need less guilt and fear, and why sustainable development needs to be connected to things that make us happy and passions. For example, instead of telling people to stop overconsume meaningless products, inspire them through showing recycled art. Instead of lecturing people in how to recycle, teach them in a fun way through, for example, virtual reality games. And instead of telling people to stop eat meat, because we usually don't like when people tell us to stop doing things we like, surprise them with the most delicious plant-based burger you can think of. What I'm saying is, allow joy, lust and party mood to empower sustainable behavior change among people. Now, the advertising industry has used this technique for centuries to create made-up needs within us. And now it's time that we master the same techniques to empower people and try to build a better world. Now, maybe you think that these four things are way out of your control. Maybe you think that these are four deep systematic errors and parts of our culture that will take centuries to change. Well, I'm not saying this is easy, but the thing is that there are certain things that every person can do, no matter what position you have. For example, you can tell children, friends, colleagues and so on that their actions matter. Make them understand that they are good enough and that they have the power to, to master their own lives and surrounding world. And when you are given the opportunity, question the structures that repress empowerment. Do what you can within the system walls to overpower them or even maybe change them. And never ever kill someone's idea or vision, even if it might sound crazy and unreachable. Try to be open-minded and celebrate bravery, within boundaries, of course. And when you save the world, don't forget to do it with a party mood. Now, before I get off this stage, I also want you all to, to just remember that you, just the way you are, can empower people. Because with your story, your qualities, your vision, and your dreams. Because people are like dominoes. We affect each other and we affect the world. And it's for us to decide in which direction we want to push these dominoes. Thank you. <laughs>